There were some big winners and losers with the last two sets of hotfixes, including a change designed to slow down the meta, which doesn't seem to be happening at all. But anyway, if you want to know if rogues will still be OP and how the meta has changed in recent weeks, make sure to stay tuned for this week's solo shuffle update. Before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly climb rating in a WoW arena. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work, and if it doesn't, you don't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Anyway, back to the video. First of all, we have to talk about Gladiator's Distinction, which is the trinket set bonus you hopefully know about by now. Last Tuesday, the bonus stamina was increased by 40%. This was intended to quote, slow down the meta, but that doesn't really seem to be the case since it meant health pools only went up by around 15k. Of course, this is a minor buff to some classes, like Warlocks and DKs, who have passive stamina increases, but as we will find out soon, this doesn't mean DKs are suddenly good again. But before we get into that, let's talk about some of the biggest winners from the hotfixes in the past two weeks. As a general meta update, we will be moving Arms Warrior up to the S tier despite no recent changes. Arms started the expansion weak, but after a few buffs in the early season and a transition to a new build, Warriors have suddenly skyrocketed in representation. Arms is clearly doing well at almost every rating bracket, and that is likely due to its ability to fit into almost any lobby, well, except into Caster Cleaves, but that seems to be a problem with every melee no matter what. Anyway, with a nerf to Hemotoxin, Arms Warriors have one of the best MS effects of any melee DPS, especially considering it can be applied to multiple targets with sweeping strikes. So with amazing healing reduction combined with great lobby flexibility, we think Arms has finally made it to the S tier in Solo Shuffle. Moving along, we have Windwalker Monk. We're not ready to move them up to the S tier quite yet, but they are definitely on the high end of the A tier, especially now after a pretty significant buff to Touch of Karma. Monks already had some of the most efficient defensive cooldowns in the bracket, and this just made them better. The main reason we aren't moving Windwalker up is the fact that they can have less desirable lobbies, especially into casters, and they continue to have a relatively steep learning curve compared to other melee. That's also why we're keeping Sub Rogue on the A tier for now, despite the fact that it is the most represented melee on the highest end of the ladder in both regions. In fact, if you ask many rank 1 players, they'll probably tell you that Sub is better than Assassination in Solo Shuffle. Despite this, we think putting Sub on the S tier would be a bit deceiving, since only a handful of players are seeming to make it work at the absolute highest level. So just like Windwalker, Sub is another spec that gets an honorable mention, but is not as accessible due to its steeper learning curve. Our last melee winner is Enhancement Shaman, who are moving their way up from the C tier since our previous update. Enhanced saw a longer list of changes in Tuesday's hotfixes, aimed at redesigning his damage profile for more sustained DPS. Overall, this is proving to pay off for Enhancement Shamans, as they no longer seem to be reliant on gimmicky one-shots and have more constant pressure. Unfortunately, we think Enhanced might be doomed to the mid-tiers in Solo Shuffle. As one of the only melee without an MS effect, it is just not well designed to compete in the bracket, even taking into account any damage buffs. Unfortunately, we have some melee going down in our rankings this update, so let's break it down. Sidu will be happy to know that Assassination might finally be falling off the S tier. Initially, rogue hotfixes seemed underwhelming, with a measly 5% nerf to Hematoxin. But with the update on March 6th, Assassination received a bunch of nerfs targeting two key issues, cooldown damage and numbing poison. The numbing change is pretty substantial since the spell single-handedly nerfed everyone's damage and healing in Arena, which made Asa a complete nuisance for healers and ranged DPS alike. We predict that Asa will suffer enough from these changes to put them in line with other melee, and for the first time this expansion, we could be entering into a sub-rogue meta. Sadly, our unholy DK friends will be joining Frost on the B tier. This is just a general meta update, as lately DKs have been clearly lagging behind our other high tier melee after their series of nerfs in the early season. Currently, the spec seems to get bullied pretty hard by both melee and caster cleaves in the bracket. Even though the slight stamina buff might have moderately buffed its bulkiness, DKs are still hindered by the fact that many of their defensives get absolutely obliterated by dampening. After the nerfs to Assassination Rogue, we think Arms Warriors are the only clear standout melee across the entire ladder. Our A tier is still pretty stacked, with Windwalker Monks and Sub Rogues performing exceptionally well at high ratings. Despite some damage buffs, we still think Outlaw Rogues and Fury Warriors are likely on the high end of the B tier, and are still as competitive overall compared to any of the high tiers. 
Now that we've covered our melee, let's move on to the biggest winners on the side of the ranged DPS. First up is Frost Mage. Despite not getting any major changes, we will be moving them up to the S tier to reflect the evolving meta. At almost every rating, Frost seems to be outperforming Arcane. There are a few reasons for this, but boils down to the fact that Frost is way more approachable. This includes the fact that it seems to have a lot of instant cast damage, and unlike Arcane or Fire, it doesn't really need to poly healers nearly as much. Frost Mage stays true to its wizard roots in Solo Shuffle and is a massive annoyance for any melee lobbies, which is something that can be difficult for other wizards. And with the periodic threat of Glacial Spike, Frost Mages have unique kill potential that is less reliant on cooldowns compared to other wizards. Taken together, we think Frost definitely deserves a spot on the S tier. In a similar boat, we have Destruction Warlocks, who again, didn't receive any direct buffs. Well, as we mentioned before, the increase to the Trinket Stamina bonus was an indirect buff to all Warlocks who have higher health pools to begin with. But that's not why we're moving them up. We actually considered putting Destro Warlock on the S tier last update after their previous series of buffs, but we didn't want to jump the gun. At this point though, we we're pretty confident in Destro Warlock. Despite the fact that they can get harassed in melee heavy lobbies, they continue to be exceptionally tanky into casters and have a wide array of instant cast damage to carry their DPS. Our last winner is one you might not have expected, Balanced Druid, who is moving up to the A tier since our last update. Even without any buffs in the hotfixes, we think Balance is at a pretty competitive position in Solo Shuffle, and is taking the ladder by storm, at least in North America. NA might actually be a bit ahead of the meta here, as the Balance Druid 4-piece is proving to be quite strong in PvP. As of right now, since Disc Priests are pretty common in the meta, the infamous Root Beam combo has gained a ton of value since Priests can't use any of their cooldowns while silenced and have no way to stop follow-up Cyclones. Now though, we have to look at the only ranged DPS to go down a tier since our last update. Unfortunately, we will be moving Elemental Shaman down from its previous spot on the S tier. Again, no nerfs on Tuesday, but here we think Ellie has just fallen out of the meta. It is still competitive on the A tier, but seems to clearly lag behind Destro Warlock, Frost Mage, and BM Hunter, who represent the peak of ranged DPS in Solo Shuffle. Despite having incredibly high damage potential, Ellie still gets harassed a bit by melee, especially rogues. With that in mind, this is what our Solo Shuffle tier list should look like for the coming weeks. Frost and Destro seem to be pulling ahead as the top wizards, reversing the lead once held by Arcane and Demo. Just like Melee, our A tier is still really stacked, with Balanced Druids making huge strides in popularity in recent weeks. The B tier continues to include the off-brand versions of other high tiers, and this will likely stay the case without any future buffs. To wrap up our tier list, let's quickly cover the healing meta since nothing really changed. Disc clearly took the ladder by storm in recent months, as indicated by their widespread representation. The nerfs we saw on March 6th were designed to tone down Disc Priest damage, but we really don't think this is a massive change. While it's true that Discipline damage could have used some nerfs, the spec seemed to be carried more by the efficiency of its defensive cooldowns, where it acts like a Swiss Army knife of CDs for its team. So, without any changes, this is our current healer tier list in Solo Shuffle. A few quick notes though. Resto Druid continues to be the healing king, but gets hurt by the relative strength of offensive dispels and the fact that it lacks a major defensive cooldown for its teammates. Mistweaver Monk is proving to be quite strong, especially with the increasingly popular Fistweaving build, but seems to be clearly behind Disc and Evoker. Beyond that, our B tier is still the same, with Resto Shamans being on the higher end of the spectrum. We want to hear your thoughts on the Solo Shuffle meta though. What changes would you make to balance Solo Shuffle? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, we wanted to remind you about Skillcapped. We are the only website that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our guides, which includes hundreds of Solo Shuffle commentaries, where pro players teach you the secret strategies to beat the toughest lobbies. When you combine this with our epic class courses that teach you how to do rank 1 level damage, it's easy to see why all of our users are able to stay ahead of the competition every season. So if you want to see real rating gains, check out Skillcapped.com using the links below. Anyway guys, that wraps up today's update. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.